And welcome back to the show. Eric Shanto has had an amazing turnaround in and out of the pool since the Olympics. He was diagnosed with testicular cancer just before the Beijing Games, but was still able to make the team in the 200 breaststroke. He swam in Beijing at the Golden Goggles Awards. He won the Perseverance Award, now completely cancer-free. Shanto is getting second win, so to speak, at the Austin Grand Prix in March. Shanto swam lifetime best in the 100 and 200 breaststrokes, which now rank him among the top three fastest times in the world this year. Without further ado, let's bring in Eric, who's live via Skype. Eric, how you doing? Pretty good. How are you this morning? Doing great, thanks. Hey, before we had you on the show, I heard a lot of clanking in the kitchen. Were you doing dishes before the morning swim show? I, I was doing dishes. I got back in town last night and uh, had a, a dishwasher full of them, so that needed to be done. Well, first of all, let, let me get this out of the way. How are you feeling right now? I'm feeling great. Everything's been going uh, really well. I've been doing a lot of traveling recently, and uh, that's been going well. And, and uh, training is uh, at an all-time high right now, so uh, everything's going very, very well. So how much time did you take off after the Olympics? And, you know, you obviously, if you're swimming lifetime best, you're, you're feeling great. But uh, it's just so different than what a lot of other Olympians did. Yeah, well, obviously I was in a pretty different situation after the Olympics uh, in, in dealing with my cancer and everything else. And whereas most people took, you know, five, six months off even uh, after the Olympics, I only took about five or six weeks off uh, after the Olympics and, and after having surgery. And, and I did that just to kind of get a little bit of control back in my life. Uh, you know, I, I wanted to uh, get back in the water and, and just kind of get my mind off uh, everything that I'd been through. So that was kind of my reasoning in, in taking a, uh, a shorter break after the Olympics. And, and, you know, I can definitely think uh, and attribute that to how fast I'm swimming right now. Was there any motivation to get back because you saw Brandon Hansen's taking some time off, Kitajim is taking some time off, you know, breaststroke's wide open? Uh, I don't think that was more motivation uh, as it was from, from what I just told you. I mean, obviously with, with those guys uh, – taking a little bit of time off right now that, that kind of opens things up a little bit more, not only for the, uh, for the U S but, uh, for the inter international scene as well. Um, you know, th those guys are obviously, uh, two of the best in, in the history of, uh, in the history of swimming in, in breaststroke. So without, without those guys, you know, obviously you've got a lot of open spots now, but you know, I think as far as I was concerned, it, it was more, uh, personal reasons for me getting back in uh, pretty quick. Do you do any 400 IM training now that, uh, now that Phelps says he's not going to swim that event anymore? You know, I, I said uh, I said I wasn't going to do that event before Phelps did, and uh, you know I, I haven't done a uh, a real competitive 400 I am in a little over a year now, and I got to say I'm okay with that. I think my days of, of competing in that event are pretty much done. But as far as uh, training for it, you know, I still do a little bit of training for it. It's uh, it's a good event to uh, base your general level of fitness off of. So I think uh, you know I think continuing to train. For that kind of distance just gives you the confidence that uh, you can finish a 200 breaststroke. All right. You are an Auburn alumni, but you train mm -hmm. with the Texas guys now. That must have been a, a difficult march for you watching. Uh, well, uh, was it? What was that like watching Auburn beat Texas at the NCAAs? Yeah, you know, I obviously got a lot of grief for that. Uh, I, I went up there at, to College Station and, uh, and watched the last uh, couple sessions of the meet. And, you know, I'm, I'm an Auburn alumni. Uh, they're my school. They're where my roots are. I'm obviously going to always, uh, always root for Auburn. But, uh, you know, Texas is, uh, is my new home now, and these guys have really taken me, uh, taken me under their wing with their program out here. And, obviously, I want them to do real well. And it was, uh, it was definitely an exciting meet to watch. So I just did a whole lot of clapping in the stands. That, that was uh, kind of how I took to it, just, just a lot of cheering in general for me. All right, Eric, I know we have some viewer questions to get to. You're a popular guy, so uh, I'm going to send it over to Jeff Cummings for a second here. Uh, he has those questions. Hey, Eric, how are you doing today? Pretty good. How are you? Pretty good. Um, we got a question from uh, one of our regular viewers who's also named Eric, and he wants to know, what drew you from Auburn to train at Longhorn Aquatics? Uh, that's actually a pretty good question, and, and the, uh, the answer is that, you know, after I was, uh, after I graduated from Auburn, you know, I'd spent about four and a half years uh, at the, at, with the Auburn program, swimming under David uh, down there, and it had been a great experience for me, but uh, I just needed a little bit of a change, and, and with the way my breaststroke had been coming about, um, and, and kind of going from the transition 
from the IMs to the breaststroke, uh, it was a very, very good place for me to come and train with Brendan um, out here in Texas. And, uh, you know, what better place to train with than with the best guy in the world? So that was one of the main things was uh, was coming out here to uh, to train with Brendan and, uh, you know, also Aaron, Ian, Neil, the rest of the guys out here. There was such a big contingent of, uh, of top swimmers in the world. It's obviously a great place to train. Well, you're not going to get any argument from me. I'm a Longhorn yeah. alum, so I'm not going to definitely say that's a bad place to go. Yeah. Uh, so I got another question for you here, um, also from Eric. He says, um, has Brendan Hansen been around the pool lately to help you coach, help coach, or have you spoken with him much? Uh, you know, I think Brendan's been taking uh, just a little bit of time off um, away from the pool uh, in general. Um, you know, I, I haven't seen uh, too much of him around the pool, but, uh, you know, he'll, he'll show up uh, every now and then. He was actually on deck uh, for a little bit last week. Um, so he's, uh, he's been kind of taking a break from, from everything, and I think uh, that's been good for him, and I know he's kind of doing his own thing outside the water. Hey, Eric, speaking of guys you've swum with, since you went to Auburn, you, you probably know Fred Bousquet, right? I do know Fred. I know Fred really well. Quick reaction to him being the first guy under 21. I'm happy for him. Um, you know, Fred is a, Fred's a guy who has kind of been a poster child for breaking down barriers in that 50 freestyle. Um, he's now held the fastest time in the world, I think, in, in uh, every distance pool that we swim in. And, uh, you know, at, at, uh, at the same time, I, I also feel kind of bad for him because people are, uh, I think, taking a lot of the credit away from him and, and giving it to the suit. And, uh, you know, that, that's not right. As, as swimmers, it's, it's our job to, uh, you know, swim in the fastest suit that's available to us. And it's Fina's job to regulate that. And so, you know, Fred's just taking advantage of, uh, of, of, you know, what's been made available to us. And, uh, you know, I, I don't think anyone should take away the, uh, the level of talent that guy has and, and the speed he has, because I know he works uh, very, very hard to get where he has. Good point. Thank you for saying that. Uh, hey, finally, I, I know you're really involved in these conservation efforts, and one specifically uh, came up on our show last week with Rowdy Gaines, Race for the Turtle. What is yeah. this? <laughs> yeah, it's the Great Turtle Race, and it's actually uh, about coming to a close. What it is is it's uh, – 11 leatherback turtles that they, uh, they're tracking from all the way up in northern Canada uh, down to their breeding grounds in the Caribbean. And uh, what you guys can do is go to the uh, uh, greatturtlerace.org and check out the, uh, the race map. Um, My Turtle Backspacer, who is uh, sponsored by Pearl Jam, is, uh, is in the lead right now. So hopefully he'll, uh, he'll, he'll get across the finish line and, and win the race. Uh, it's uh, it's actually coming to a close here, so you guys should uh, should go check it out and, and kind of see what uh, what it's all about. Cause it's been going on for about two weeks now, but it's a really cool event just to raise awareness for uh, for not only the turtles but just ocean ocean conservation in general. Did you get to name it your own turtle? No, no, no. Pearl Jam named it. That was uh, they were sponsoring it, so uh, so they, they named it. I think you guys uh, can figure out uh, the reason for their naming it uh, Backspacer pretty soon here, maybe later on this year. <laughs> So do you get to hang out with Pearl Jam now? Is that the way this uh, works? Hopefully. Hopefully. I've, uh, I've gotten to talk to uh, uh, Stone a couple times, and, uh, you know, I, I, the rumors are that they're going to be here for, uh, for ACL uh, later on this year, which I hope are true, and, and hopefully we'll, uh, we'll get to go see a show with them. All right, Eric. Thanks for coming on the show, buddy. Appreciate it. You're very welcome. Good talking to you. Great. Okay, that's Eric Chanteau joining us from his home and his kitchen, apparently, with the dishes clanking in Austin, Texas. That's our 